You lied to me. <laughs> it's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshi. Hey, that's what y'all gonna be telling Bix. You lied to me about EOS. You lied to me. Oh my God, you lied to me. <laughs> Shout out to my man, Tone618. He wanted me to play some Return of the Mac. This just like, this is straight up 90s right here. My man, Mark Morrison, Return of the Mac. That's a classic right there. We're also rocking out to some Slick Rick, Children's Story. My man, Rogue State for You, wanted me to play that track. I'm actually all pretty much caught up. I'm like two, two song requests behind now. So... You know, send those song requests in if you guys want to hear your favorite music, favorite track. Let me know and I'll play it back. But today, we are going to be looking at um, EOS. Got some major news out from them. And also, we're going to look at Bitcoin Cash performance, man. It touched almost $1,800 uh, the day, the, I think yesterday or the day before. So we're going to take a look at why possibly this has happened. Man, Bitcoin Cash has been on a tear, man. Outperforming the majors by a long shot. If we look here, I'm using CoinCap.io. Trying out different uh, market cap websites just to get a feel for which ones I like the most. Market cap for uh, the entire cryptocurrency space is $448 billion. We've come back a little bit. Bitcoin's dominance, 36.1%. So with this site, I'm not able to scroll all the way down for some reason in, in my software. So I'm probably gonna have to rule this one out to use. You see it cuts off there, not sure why. But at least we can look at the top 16. So we see here, Bitcoin has pulled back. And I said that uh, I thought we would see a pullback at 10K. It was a, it was a psychological whole number. This move up to 10,000 was unlike the move up the previous time. Uh, the move up last time was very irrational. It was just like FOMO to its max. So um, I thought we would pull back at 10,000 that time, as I said in the, the previous video, but we didn't. But this time it was a gradual kind of move back up. We built a base at 6,000 around there 6600 and we just been kind of building the base it's been a bid under the the market all the way up so it wasn't like this rapid you know moonshot um and and that's why i kind of felt like 10,000 would be a an area of retracement so uh let's take a look at the actual charts really quickly though while we're at it we did score a point here 10k not today so um we may see some more pullback uh we may even go back to this uh long-term trend line that i drew um but we'll just have to wait and see <clears throat> but overall markets are still looking healthy i think it's a nice healthy bid under the markets um i like this type of price action over what we saw last year where we ran from 6600 6000 or even lower, you can say maybe it started at 3,000 all the way up to 20. That was unhealthy movement in my opinion. Um, so glad to see this type of price action this go around. So today's article, the first one I'm excited about is EOS IO announces Dawn 4.0 update full release slated for June. So they've been ahead of schedule, the EOS team, dev team, and uh, I know a couple of people. There's a guy that reached out to me here in uh, Detroit. I got to get back with him. He's trying to put node together. You got to get everything up and running. He probably has already done this already. It's, it's, I've been so crazy busy. I forgot to uh, reach back out to him. But I think there are maybe 20 slots. Even if you don't get um, elected, you, um, I think, can be in the secondary or something like that. But at any rate, EOS Dawn 4.0 update for release slated for June. It says here, Block One CTO Dan Larimer has announced the release of EOS IO Dawn 4.0, the latest version of the architecture of EOS IO platform for decentralized applications. The update includes a number of changes in preparation for the full launch of EOS IO 1.0 in June, according to Larimer's Medium post. Saturday, May 5th. 
Block One is an open source software publisher currently working on EOS IL, a decentralized operating system designed for industrial scale applications. EOS, the ERC20 token that is fueling the EOS IO platform, currently has the fifth largest market cap of all cryptocurrencies, according to data from Coin Market Cap. One month after Don 3.0 was released on April 6th, the 4.0 update includes a number of new features and guidelines, according to Lamer's post. And I'll leave the link to his post uh, in the description of this video. It says here it mainly focuses focused on inter-blockchain communication, a feature that Block One believes to be critical for scaling blockchains up for large user bases. According to Dan Limmer, Don 4.0's inter-blockchain communication would give applications running on different blockchains the ability to purchase the unused RAM from each other over multiple chains with independent memory regions running on independent hardware. Specifically, Block One predicts many applications will prefer to will prefer the many chain approach to scaling as it will lower overall costs and scale faster. Don 4.0 seeks to encourage users to distribute their unused RAM by letting supply and demand govern the price. As EOS IO expects increased demand for RAM, the price will automatically increase so that the price approaches infinity before the system runs out of RAM. Interesting. In addition to inner blockchain communications, Block One has been focused on clean up and stability of the EOS IO software. This is the part I want you guys to hear. According to GitHub, where the project is currently in development, there are 500 and eight open issues with the software at press time. However, with 987 issues now closed, EOS IO is the eighth most active C++ project on GitHub for the past month, not far below Bitcoin, which holds the sixth uh, place. So I really want you guys to start taking this project seriously. It's not going anywhere. Will there be hiccups? Absolutely. Um, you know, being concerned about an individual that was on the team, uh, in particular, I'm talking about Brock Pierce, you know, he stepped down, he stepped away from the team a few months ago. I, I actually covered that event and it was bad for PR. It was, it was good that he did step away. There was some child abuse allegations against him. You know, that's fine. You know, you should be concerned and have people like that step away from the project because it does look bad for the overall um, image of the company and the, the actual project. But with that being said, you don't know. And this is kind of what Bix is talking about. He's concerned because of that. And he doesn't know, doesn't like Dan Lammer or whatever. If you're if we're basing our opinions about projects on the people that are kind of behind these this decentralized project, I think we're having the wrong um, conversation or argument. You can't do that. That doesn't make sense. You should be looking at it from a like like uh, Cliff High does. I don't agree with Cliff High as well, but at least his viewpoint on why he doesn't like EOS is more from a programming standpoint than subjective standpoint how Bix is doing it. We don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Satoshi Nakamoto could be an NSA, CIA, child abuse, murderer, all that. We would never know. And it's good that we don't because now we're focusing on the actual technology and judging it off of technology, adoption, traction, all that good stuff not on the person and that goes from that goes the same with bitcoin cash that's why you know people leave comments in my in my videos about when i say i'm a supporter of bitcoin cash i'm a supporter of pretty much any project that's looking to stay decentralized push the adoption of cryptocurrencies forward i'm for with the exception of Ripple, because Ripple is a company-run cryptocurrency. It's not decentralized. And, it, you know, maybe, it, you know, they have their reasons why. 
but you know a lot of people a lot of newcomers to the space are adopting or buying ripple just on speculation and then they, so what happens is you start confusing and mixing what ripple is with what bitcoin is what litecoin is with you know monero digibuy or whatever whatever your 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 uh flavor is that's why i don't like to see ripple in the mix but other than that any project that's looking to push the culture forward should be respected you may not necessarily like it but don't trash it and that's what's that's what's going on a lot in this space so with bitcoin cash roger ver yeah you know there's some, been some questionable behaviors from him absolutely i take i put that aside i look at what they're trying to accomplish with increasing block size making it faster um yes they don't have much as much volume as bitcoin but bitcoin was once at the level that bitcoin cash is at so you can't you gotta think they're growing they're trying to push the movement forward and that kind of segues me into this next article which i don't know if you guys have been following but bitcoin cash broke 1800 dollars. so let's take a look at this article it says here over the past couple of weeks bitcoin cash has been in the spotlight with stories like roger verse lawsuit which eventually was withdrawn for lack of funds by the group london blockchain accepting bitcoin cash and ethereum classic and bitcoin bitcoin.com getting delisted from coin market cap bitcoin cash was trading at 1823 dollars a token with an 18 percent spike in the last 24 hours bch has shown a massive 180 percent growth compared to its price from last month when it was trading just under 642 dollars although trading volumes have increased for all the coins in the top 10 bch has witnessed a 740 percent growth in trading volumes according to many from the community the recent spike in prices is in tandem with the trend of prices hiking just before a fork the upcoming hard, hard fork may 15th is called bitcoin abc and would result in a block size at 32 megabytes bitcoin currently has a block size of one megabyte <laughs> Process of seven transactions per second and BCH currently has an eight megabyte block size. A recent tweet by the Twitter handle Bitcoin stirred up controversy when they said that Bitcoin Cash was the oldest cryptocurrency. So, you know, yeah, Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> the Bitcoin Cash team can definitely do some trolling. You know, they, they poke at Bitcoin and the Bitcoin core team. But you know what? It, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, the, the end users, the public, the merchants will pick. It doesn't matter who, who thinks is first and who thinks is older. Or it's whichever technology works the best in real world application. Here's a person that says here, another Twitter user said, I own BTC way before BCH came on the scene. What utter rubbish. Bitcoin, your desperation is so evident and all-encompassing that no one can view Bitcoin Cash with an ounce of credibility, irrespective of how good the technology might have been. Raul Sood, founder of Unicron, said, Enough already. Bitcoin Core is Bitcoin. It's BTC. It is a store of value. It is digital gold. It's market cap dwarfs Bitcoin Cash. If you want to be a payments currency, by definition, you need to have stable value. So why own it? So yeah, that's, I mean, he makes a good point there for sure. Um, and But that's an issue with all of them, to be honest with you. And that's why my my overall theory and hypothesis about some crypto being an actual currency and used by the masses, I don't, I don't see one yet. I don't see one yet. And that's because it's not stable. There aren't any that are stable and there aren't any that will be stable in my opinion for a long time you know um because right now it's a speculator's market i'm sorry if bitcoin and any of these crypto if bitcoin litecoin uh monero any of these coins if they just stopped today frozen and had maybe a one percent two percent deviation 
perpetually. About half of you guys be out of this joint. Because you're here for the speculation. You're here for the huge moves up, huge moves down. That's what you're here for. And that can never be a currency. It won't function. You got to you gotta go back to the economic books and, and, and get brush up on your economics. That will not function properly as a viable currency for global trade, um, everyday purchases, so on and so forth. It just won't. So I have not seen yet a currency, a cryptocurrency that is fit to be used globally on that level. Yeah, there are some that are fast. Litecoin is fast. Um, Monero, Digibyte, Dash, all these are pretty fast coins. But the issue is not the, the, the time. Bitcoin Cash, they're, they're faster at least than Bitcoin, but that's not the issue. Um, the issue is price stability. I can't go to the store today and, and, and I'm talking more so from the merchant, you know. I can't sell eggs today at whatever the price is. And I bought them at X price. And then next week, the price of those eggs drops in comparison to um, what people are paying me as far as like cryptocurrencies. I'm getting less cryptocurrency for those same eggs because the price of cryptos has skyrocketed. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, people. So let me know your thoughts, though. You know, I like to keep it real but um, and, and honest. You know, what do you guys think about this move up in Bitcoin cash to $1,800? I think it is because of the hard fork. People are buying ahead of that fork. That's a classic move. That's what I think it is right now. Let me know your thoughts on that and also your thoughts on EOS. Dom 4.0. What do you guys think, man? Think you think EOS is a scam? You think it's a fraud? You think think Dan Limmer is is taking all the ETH from everyone's this mass conspiracy? Man, you guys crack me the hell up. It's your boy Crypto Blood. I'm out. Holla.